Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship as we come together on this, the second Sunday after Epiphany, and also the celebration of Human Relations Day. Uh, today we are blessed to have Diane Dilk serving as our liturgist and our choir to help lead us um, in special music. Let us stand and join responsively in our call to worship. Good morning. Please join me responsibly in the call to worship. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. As we, As we gather, gather in this place, O oh Lord, allow your spirit to fill our very being. As we worship today, let us bring to mind brothers and sisters who are worshiping elsewhere throughout the world. Let us raise our vision above color, culture, and creed that separate us. We will celebrate God's gift of abundance and see beyond our own limitations. Praise be to God. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, which can be found in your hymnal on page 98, and the words are also printed in your bulletin. be seated and join with me in our opening prayer good and generous God we bring our ourselves to you this day our gifts and our limitations and pray you might dedicate them to your work 
We confess that we have too often missed being the church you wanted and needed. We have placed the blame on not having enough, not enough money, not enough members, not enough talent, time, or power. We needed to be reminded by the Apostle Paul that we have all that we need, whatever our circumstances. Renew us, loving God, and give us a new day and another chance. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning is taken from Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11, and I'll be reading from the Lectern Bible. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, here I am, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let the people of God say amen. Oh, you can do better than that. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Our second text uh, is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Um, this letter in this particular group of verses that I'm going to share with you are actually just the very opening um, of Paul's greeting to the Corinthians um, at the front end of the pastoral letter that he writes to them. Uh, many of us remember that it is within this uh, letter that we have incredible imagery about um, reconciliation and we have incredible imagery around uh, the gift of love and all of the things that love is and is demonstrated to be um, and what it means to have uh, gifts of the spirit and uh, to be one part of many parts of the body of Christ um, images that we see much later in Paul's letter uh, but for the, this morning, um, the, in the wisdom of the lectionary, they have asked us just to wrestle with these first couple of verses. And so let us hear, um, let us hear from Paul as he greets uh, the church at Corinth. From Paul, called by God's will to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and from Sothians, our brother, this letter to God's church that is in Corinth, to those who have been made holy to God in Jesus Christ, who are called to be God's people, together with all those who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in every place, he is their Lord and our Lord. Grace, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always for you because of God's grace that was given to you in Christ Jesus. That is, you were made rich through him in everything in all your communication and every kind of knowledge, in the same way that the testimony about Christ was confirmed with you. The result is that you are not missing any spiritual gift while you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also confirm your testimony about Christ until the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, God is faithful, and you are called by God to partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this word this day. We come into this space from different experiences, from the busyness or quietness of different types of weeks, yet we come here together to proclaim that we are your people, called by you. Be present with us now as we listen for your word, for the special gift that you might offer to us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we are, a greeting from Paul. Sorry, I can't decide if I like these on or not. <laughs> here we are, a greeting from Paul. I don't know about you, but it sure sounds like a huge mouthful. What did you catch in those words? What of all of the words that I have just shared, what phrases grabbed you or held you tight? Did you catch any? What did you catch? This is a test. <laughs> I came down here on purpose um, intentionally because one of the things that I feel myself we are in need of building is our connection. In need of building our connections one with another and in relationship with each other as a community of faith, but not only here in this place, but beyond. And I feel I'm able to do that a little bit better from here, eye to eye with you, than than in the pulpit. What did you hear? Um, in some of my imaginings of what this morning might go like, <clears throat> one of the first things I thought I might ask of you is that everybody that's in the last 10 pews move all the way up. Uh-oh. <laughs> we have our places of comfort and we have our places and our routines and our rituals often for reasons. But we are called to be in connection one with another and called for a purpose and a ministry that is bigger than ourselves. As I read over this scripture and as I looked at the words of some commentators, the words that come in the seventh and ninth verses particularly come as invitations to us, even in the midst of all of Paul's, it seems, excess of words at the beginning. It seems in any day and in any age, words like these can capture us in a particular time and space of where we are. That is, you were made rich through, every, through him in everything. You were made rich through him in everything. And the result is that you are not missing any spiritual gift. How many of us really fully believe that? How many of us really fully believe that? How many of us put ourselves out into the world with a sense that we have been made full and complete? All of the things that we need have been provided. And with that, walk with a particular sense of confidence and assurance. I would love to say to you that as your pastor, I always walk around in that way, always fully assured of my faith, never with any doubts, 
fully assured of what God is going to do. And yet, I believe it's important for me to be honest with you and that I, just like any of you and like all of us, and collectively, we struggle with this. Commentators talk about all of Paul's gobbledygook at the beginning of these opening verses because Paul is trying to address some unique things within the community of Corinth. In particular, he is trying to address perhaps not their underconfidence, which perhaps many of us might find ourselves or the church of the modern age struggling with, as a sense of underconfidence, but rather overconfidence. Paul begins this letter in the way that he does because the community to which he is speaking is not only confident, they are overconfident to the point of arrogance. Arrogance that is intended to be tempered by some of his words there. His words about being called together with all those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Together with all of those who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul is reminding them that their understanding of who Christ is or their particular way of living church, their particular way of living out the faith, is not in isolation nor alone. They are part of something way bigger than themselves. And all of the words at the beginning where he goes on talking about being called by God's will, being called to lead God's church, commentators remind us that in some way, Paul begins in this way, almost listing off his credentials. The things that perhaps should temper their arrogance and overconfidence and require particularly that they might open their minds to the instructions that Paul will give. Instructions and words that point, when received openly, to the acknowledged divisions that there are in the church, to the acknowledged brokenness that there is, and the need to be unified more clearly in the calling that comes from Christ Jesus alone. I thank my God, he says, always for you because of God's grace that was given to you in Christ Jesus. That is, that you were made rich through him in everything, in all of your communication and every kind of knowledge in the same way that the testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. You are not missing any spiritual gift. As the commentators through United Methodist Discipleship invited us to consider perhaps many of our churches, and even perhaps where we are, we come more from a place of believing that we do not have enough. That the scarcity that has been defined by the world's resources is a scarcity that has crept into our own hearts and soul that perhaps paralyzes us from even walking into the work which we have been called to. And in the framework of this week, it made me wonder if there is not an arrogance also in that. An arrogance in the underconfidence 
of who God has called us to be. You see, when I think in a pastoral way about where we are, Willow Grove United Methodist Church is, I am afraid too often we speak of what we lack, of what we do not have enough, instead of the great gifts of what we have. Even just last week, I remember as I struggled writing all of the announcements and in frustration, perhaps, the everyday problems that arise, I remember thinking, you know what, I'm going to put an announcement in the bulletin that says, Wendy and I need help. We need help with the website. We are stuck. We have a problem. We have no idea how to resolve it. We've been wrestling with it on and off quietly for months. And does anybody even know? It never made it in there because, coincidentally, Nate was our liturgist last week. Coincidentally, Nate was our liturgist last week. And even in that calling that I felt, perhaps to put it in print, that there is help that is needed, that there is a gift somewhere I know it in the framework of this congregation, which I believe can be answered, which leaves responsibility not only at the feet of myself or one other person, but is here in this space. I found myself quieted by the Holy Spirit that said, perhaps you are to take that as a cue. In the time before the service began, Nate and I exchanged a rather brief exchange. Perhaps you might ask, why hadn't we asked him already months before? But much like you, I could say that there are the everyday limitations of time. There wasn't enough time. It was on the list, but it had fallen to the bottom. It was important, but not yet raised. But there was the God moment right there in front of me. Nate, can you help us? I had collected over the week and a half before that a couple of emails from Wendy that had been coming here and there. I was sure it was a simple solution, but the simple fact of it was that this is a unique knowledge base. And yet, not so unique that we could not be taught or invited or pointed towards a solution. Nate quickly scribbled a couple of notes. Didn't have any chance to connect with him for quite a few more days until Thursday morning when I finally forwarded him the emails and said, as and when you have time in the next couple of days, and I said week or two weeks, I mean, it's been weeks and months now anyway, do you mind looking at this? That evening, we exchanged a few more emails, not at least because, as I'm sure you're coming to find out, everything has extra authentication codes and double checks. We exchanged those texts, and within a matter of probably seven and a half minutes, Nate said, I think I found your problem. He sent Wendy and I an extensive email, pictures included, of what to be looking for the next time we opened up the screen. And on Friday morning, we looked it up, followed his prompts, and realized, yep, there, hidden, off to the left-hand side, are a couple of menus, menus we had never noticed before, never seen before. And with a few quick clicks, we were exactly where we needed to be. The website edited version that Wendy and I had been looking at since somewhere in the middle of October was a version of the website that was over five years old. Though what you could see online was published six months ago. We thought we lost five years worth of work. Five years worth of editing, revisions, changing of language, but there tucked away, sat up in the corner, 
was a simply little drop-down menu we hadn't seen, didn't notice, had no idea to look for. And there was our most recent version. Spiritual gifts. Gifts that we each all have, that we underestimate the value of, that we forget can be given and shared on behalf of God, on behalf of the community. Small little moments, little things we forget that are within our midst. God speaks to us every day if we will listen. Every day if we listen. Another one of those moments was an inclination to make my way to deliver a few envelopes that had been left that had not yet been picked up. There was an inclination earlier in the week of a particular person for whom I should be looking to visit or just check in with. In so following it, found that that person is now deceased. Many of you know that Robert Sanders came into our community in quite a reluctant, reserved fashion many years ago. Perhaps some of you even wrestled with knowing some of his past perhaps even struggled to see what God was doing in the future. Last week, when we created the altar for the star words, on the side of that altar was a Hummel statue of Mary and a toddler Jesus, a gift that I had been given by him. Pastors' offices are filled with these kinds of things, <laughs> like teachers. People share parts of their history, parts of their past, things they hope for in the future. The Hummel statue was one of a large collection that his mother had, one that filled all of the walls of their downstairs, something he looked to find a new home for in a large way. When he invited me over one time and I spent time looking over all of these incredible statues and wondering about the life of the person who collected them, I was struck by their variety, but perhaps some of those that were religious in nature. The statue came as a gift some weeks later. Of all of the envelopes, of all of the six invitations that were in front of me that I felt a calling to respond to, the first to whom I went to visit was him. But on arriving at his door, met his girlfriend and found out that he had passed away the day before Thanksgiving. passed away the day before Thanksgiving, and at this point, I am not sure, has fully received any sort of final goodbye or burial, perhaps in the midst of distress in his family. But he had been a part of us, and we were a part of him. For good or for ill, we have been connected. When God calls us to be church, and I believe when Paul is talking to us about being church, there is not an invitation to create a large facade and institution and to maintain it in some sort of pristine way. Jesus did not call us to build huge infrastructures 
but he called us to be in relationship. And relationships are messy. And the building of the kind of community that Christ calls us to and that King reminded us of is beloved community. And it is not easy, and it is not clean. It is a work, like a work of art. A work that we step into by faith, day in, day out. We recognize not just the logs in our neighbors, are, the speck in our neighbor's eyes, but we acknowledge the misgivings and the faults of our own. We pray. We pray to God for forgiveness, for the way that we have underestimated our community, the way we have underestimated others, but perhaps even the way we have underestimated ourselves. Let us be a people that in the confidence of Paul's invitation remembers that we are saints. Saints, those that recognize the need for our own deliverance and step into the light and the strength of Christ Jesus. Let us pray the prayer that our ancient brothers and sisters prayed. I put all my hope in the Lord. For he has lifted me out of the pit of death. He has put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise for our God. And many on learning this will be amazed. For they too will trust in the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this very day which you have given us. A new day with a new sunrise. A new day with the bright shining warmth. A new day as we look forward to a time of renewal, as we look forward to a time of respite. Help us to keep our eyes open for the new sprigs of life that are coming forth. And remind us to start where we are, to use what we have, and to do what we can in your name. Amen. Let us join together in our hymn of response, O Come and Dwell in Me.
as we look towards our time as the prayers of the people, uh, for what is it that you would have us pray this day? For what is it that you would have us pray this day? Karen. Um, I would say continued prayers for um, for Janet Sagan and for Kelly Zimmerman. I know I just saw Kelly and Janet yesterday, and both of them are doing well. Um, I think that Kelly is, is, is I think I think Kelly is still going through chemotherapy monthly, but she looked good yesterday. And it was great to visit with them. But yes, they I would say it's still need, they still need um, prayers of healing and strength. So prayers for Janet Sajan and Kelly Zimmerman, um, both as they are recovering and undergoing, um, and Kelly in particular, she continues to undergo treatment. Thanks. For what else would you have us pray? Right, so um, Dave asked if there was any update on Rich Carley. Um, I talked to Rich um, about a week ago, and I'm hoping to visit him in the next day or two. Um, last I heard, he was, uh, they were working him pretty hard. <laughs> um, you know, he's exhausted from the therapy uh, that he's doing. Um, at this point in time, I'm not really sure that um, there's any sort of timeline, um, but one of the comments that he made to me was, you know, this was a really significant heart attack, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it seems obvious, right? But I think even he's wrestling with, you know, just the level of significance and um, how long it's taking, you know, to recover and, um, and what, you know, he's in need of. Um, I would say that if you don't know this already, um, he did get a new cell phone number and I think we've noted that and he would love to hear from you. Um, so he's still learning to work it. Um, it's, a, it's a newer cell phone, and so I would say that if you call him and you don't get through, that could be one of two things. One, it's, it's just, it's not by him and he can't pick it up so quickly. Um, or he could have left it in his room while he's at therapy. Uh, he would like to talk, talk to people. Um, he does not necessarily, he's not necessarily really good yet at picking up voicemail or understanding like how to fully get into that. So just to try again. Right? So not to be discouraged that way. Yeah. Um, it had been in there for a while. Uh, let me see if it's in the back. Yeah, but I can, I can give it to you. And like I said, I'm hoping to see him in just the next um, couple of days. In fact, I was also hoping to also reach out to his sister and ask um, if there's any way. I happened to drive past his house the other day, um, and it just made me wonder if there was anything for those of us that are really in the neighborhood, if there was also any way that we could sort of help them or assist that way, just recognizing that perhaps for somebody that's right in the neighborhood, even just to take the mail inside or something, that it's not such a long time. Um, I don't know. That might be a simple thing that we can do, but um, yep. Yeah. So thank you. Yep. So prayers for the extended Weller family, um, and in particular prayers for Colin and for Ned, uh, who've been moved to a new memory care facility um, that's over on Bristol Road. Okay, and that just happened, I'm assuming, yeah. pretty um, recently. Friday, trying to keep them together. Okay, very good, very good. So. So someone asked, I'm thinking about the people online, um, someone asked uh, what facility it might be. Uh, Terry, are, are Linda and Craig online? It's called Bristol House, perhaps, in Warrington. 
um, maybe you could ask them if they could confirm that for us. Um, that would be great. Thank you. For who else would you have us pray? Brad? Okay, prayers for you, especially this coming Thursday as you meet with probably the doctor and your orthopedist uh, about the possibility of getting back to work. Very good. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, and I would like to just offer an update about Ginny Vins. Um, last week I learned pretty much right as service was starting um, that Ginny had been hospitalized, um, that she had had a fall and uh, sustained a broken hip and she injured her elbow. Um, although I'm not really sure which happened first because sometimes there are breaks that happen that cause the fall, even though we always think about it the opposite way. Um, but I've been able to be in touch with her daughter, Joyce. Um, she was hospitalized Thursday a week ago and then I think by early Monday or Tuesday, uh, she was transferred to ProMedica, which we all know formerly as Powerback over on Davisville Road. Um, and so the address uh, that you can send greetings to her if you would like to on Davisville Road is there. Um, her daughter also shared that phone number that's there and she said she'd be happy to talk to you. If she can reach your phone, she would be very happy to talk to you. And um, for those of you that have ever talked to Ginny on the phone, um, she's co really quite delightful um, and always has lovely stories to share. So um, prayers for her. Um, it's my hope to be able to see her very shortly also. Terry? Hold on two seconds. No, it's called Pro Medica. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see if they've got a new sign out there, but at least we know where on Davisville Road uh, she is. Terry, I think you were going to say something about... Okay, uh, so Ned and Colin are at Bristol House in Warrington. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there anything else for which you would ask that we pray? I would just like to say thank you again to the choir. You guys sounded really incredible this morning. Um, and thank you to uh, Alex with your leadership. We appreciate that very much. Um, if there are no others, then let us go together to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we have lifted up before you the names of those that are a part of our community, those for whom we share our love and our concern. We give thanks also for the many gifts that this, the way in which this community is knit together, and for the great gifts of joy of young members and celebrations and music and laughter that are also a part of it. We ask that you would wrap your arms of healing around those whom we have mentioned. Be present with us even in the midst of the significance of such health challenges and sometimes even loss. Lord, to be present with your spirit, recognizing sometimes that simply our companionship in silence is the best gift. We give you thanks for the opportunity opportunity to be a part of the body of Christ and for the many ways that we have been encouraged and empowered by those in the past and those present amongst us, beside us. Empower us now as we go forward so that we might continue to strengthen others and encourage them by our life and by our faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray, who taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our very, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever.
gracious God, you are a generous God, and we bring ourselves to you. We bring these gifts to you this day, proclaiming that it is enough. Help us to live in the abundance of your provision. Help us for our thinking to be reframed by your gospel and invitations. Help us to know of your presence with us now and in the days to come. Bless these gifts. May they be used faithfully for your work throughout this community and the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our closing hymn, uh, we are actually going to turn um, to page 733, um, Marching to Zion. Uh, not that one that's in, in the bulletin, but number 733, um, Come We That Love the Lord. And let us go forward from this place with the confidence of the children of God. Let us go forward with the power of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of God the Father who provides, Christ the Savior who redeems, and the power of the Holy Spirit present with us always. Amen. <laughs>